All right, let's get started. This is Math 2. We're going to go over the Unit 9 Review Worksheet. Uh, Mr. Trenna, we're the Clovis High School Cougars. Okay, so some of these, uh, we're not going to do the entire worksheet. We're just going to pick 11 problems that we're going to do. So we're going to start at number 4 here. Okay, so number 4, we're taking the quantity 9y to the third plus y minus 1, and then we're subtracting from it the quantity negative 2y to the second minus 8y plus 7. So whenever we have a subtraction problem or an addition problem, but in this case a subtraction problem, what we want to do is the first thing is we want to rewrite the problem without parentheses. So remember if there's no number in front of the parentheses it's a 1 and to rewrite the problem without parentheses you're going to distribute the, the number the in front of the parentheses into every term into the parentheses. So in this first parentheses, 1 times 9y to the third is 9y to the third. 1 times positive y is positive y. And then 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. That was easy. Now we get to the second parentheses, and once again, we have a 1 here, so we're going to distribute. We always want to write the problem without parentheses. That's going to be our first step if we're adding or subtracting. Now, when we distribute here, we have to treat this 1 as a negative 1. So we're going to go negative 1 times negative 2y squared. So that's going to give me a positive 2y squared. Then we're going to multiply negative 1 times negative 8y. Well, that's going to give me a positive 8y. And then we're going to multiply negative 1 times positive 7. So that's going to give me a negative 7. Now once I do that, what I do is, um, after I get rid of the parentheses, I'm going to combine any terms that would be considered like terms. And I start at the highest exponential value, which is 9y to the third. Are there any other y to the thirds? No. So we know that 9y to the third has to be part of my answer. I'm going to cross it off because I dealt with it. Then I'm going to go to the y to the second. So you can see we have a positive 2y to the second. There are no other y to the seconds, so I know my answer has to have a positive 2y to the second in it. Okay, and I'm going to cross off that because I've dealt with it. Then I'm going to go to the y's. So I have a positive 1y here, and I have a positive 8y, so I can combine those together. Remember, that's a 1 right there. So 1 plus 8 is 9, so I get a positive 9y. Okay, now I'm going to cross those off because I've dealt with it. And then at the end, I deal with my constants, which are just my numbers with no variables next to them. I have a negative 1. I'm going to combine it with a minus 7. That gives me negative 8. So there's my solution to number 4. All right, so moving on. The next number that was assigned to you was number 13. So we're flipping the page over, and we're going all the way to number 13. So in number 13, we're taking the quantity 2x minus 3, and then we're multiplying it by the quantity x squared minus 3x plus 9. Okay, so when we multiply two polynomials by each other, the technique that I showed how to multiply is, is that we're going to use the rectangle area technique to multiply. So I draw a rectangle. Along the top of the rectangle, I write what's in the first parentheses, which is a 2x, a minus, and a 3. At the minus sign, I draw a line going down. And then along the side of the rectangle, I write what's in the second parentheses, which is an x squared a minus 3x and a plus 9. Okay, at the minus sign I draw a, rec or a line, at the plus sign I draw a line. And then the idea is I'm going to multiply the two parts that come together in each rectangle and each one of these six little rectangles and I'm going to write the result. So in this first uh, rectangle right here, I'm going to take x squared and I'm going to multiply it by 2x. So that would be 2x to the third power. Okay, In the top right rectangle, I'm going to take x squared. And then I'm going to multiply it by, and we've got to be careful here. There's a 3, but that's a minus, so I have to treat it as a negative 3. So x squared times negative 3 gives me negative 3x. And I keep going. So this middle left rectangle, I have a minus 3x, so that would be negative 3x. I'm going to multiply it by that number there, or that expression there, which is 2x. So that gives me negative 6x squared. 
Okay, the middle right rectangle, I'm going to take the negative 3x, which is that part, and I'm going to multiply it by that, which is negative 3. That would give me positive 9x. Okay, and then the bottom left rectangle, I'm going to take positive 9, multiply it by 2x, so 9 times 2x, that gives me 18x. And then the bottom right rectangle, I'm going to take the positive 9, and I'm going to multiply it by the negative 3 which would give me negative 27. Now, all of these right here are my answers. So that combined with that, combined with that, combined with that, combined with that, combined with that. Whoops, I see a mistake right here. That's 18x, I forgot to write the x. Those are my answers. Okay, I just wanna simplify my answer. So my answer is, and I'm gonna start writing my answer with the highest exponent. So I have two x to the thirds. There are no other x to the thirds, so two x to the third is part of my answer. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to combine, well, that's an x squared there, I'm messing up left and right. Now I'm going to combine these two together because they both have x squareds in them. So I take the negative 6, I combine it with the negative 3, that makes negative 9, and then I leave the everything else as is. So that gives me negative 9x squared. Then I can combine the 18x and the 9x together. That makes positive 27x. 18 plus 9 is 27. And then at the end, I have this negative 27. So there's my solution to number 13 when I multiply the problem out. Okay, the next number I'm going to do is number 15. So number 15 says write an expression that is equivalent to the following binomials and then the hint is that we're going to factor. So if you notice in number 15 we have a binomial, we have a subtraction sign, and then we have 49 which is a perfect square number. So what we do is, is we rewrite this problem as y to the second and we're going to turn it into a trinomial. So we're going to make it plus 0y minus 49. Okay, so when you have a binomial with a subtraction symbol and a perfect square number, just change it into a trinomial by putting a plus, a zero, and whatever the variable is. All right, now I know how to factor a trinomial. This is why I do this. So the way I factor a trinomial is, I know this trinomial is a plus minus trinomial. Trinomials always factor in the two parentheses, and my parentheses are going to have a plus and a minus in it. My first term in each parentheses is going to be y and y because y squared y times y gives me y squared and then to figure out what numbers go in here I'm going to take my last term which is 49 and then I'm going to write all the pairs of numbers that multiply to make 49 there's only two 1 times 49 and 7 times 7 one of those is my answer to put there and the answer is, which pair can we add or subtract together to make this middle value, zero? Well, it has to be seven and seven. Seven minus seven is equal to zero. So I know this factors into y plus seven and y minus seven. There's number 15. Okay, now we're gonna do number 17. So in number 17, the problem says factor completely. So in this problem here, in number 17, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for a greatest common factor. Okay, so I'm gonna take each one of these uh, terms and I'm gonna factor them. So eight becomes, when I factor eight down, it becomes two times two times two, and x to the third is x, x, x. When I factor three x squared down, that three is prime, so three we can't factor, and x squared is x, x. And then I have a plus here, okay? So now I look, so is there anything in common? Well, absolutely, you could see each one of these lists, they each have an x and an x in it. So that means my greatest common factor is x squared. So I'm gonna factor those x's out, and then in parentheses next to my greatest common factor, I'm gonna write what's left. So you see in this first list right, right here, I have left a two times two times two times x. So that's eight x. I have an addition symbol left over. And then my second list, after I cross out the x's, I factor them out, I have a three left over. So number 17 would factor into eight x squared times the quantity eight x plus three. Okay, number 19, now we're factoring number 19. Well, number 19 is a trinomial, and this trinomial has no leading coefficient. So we know that trinomials will always factor in the two sets of parentheses, 
And since this is a minus minus trinomial, minus minus trinomials will always factor into a plus and a minus. Okay, the first term in each factor is an m and an m, because m times m is m squared. And now I'm gonna take my last term, which we call my c value, this is my c value, and I'm gonna write down all the pairs of numbers that multiply to make 32. One and 32, two and 16, four and eight, and that is it, okay? Now, one of these pairs is my answer, and my answer is what makes, what adds or subtracts together to make four? Well, it has to be four and eight, okay? Now, one of them's positive, one of them's negative. So my question is, is it positive four and negative eight? or is it gonna be positive eight and negative four? We look here, that's a minus four. So it has to be positive four and negative eight have to be my two numbers. So this factors into m plus four multiplied by the quantity m minus eight. Okay, that would be how you do number 19. Moving on to number 23, you notice in number 23, we are factoring a trinomial, but the trinomial has a leading number. So here's what we do when we have a leading coefficient number. I'm gonna take the leading number, which is a five, I'm gonna cross it out, and I'm gonna put it at the back end, and I'm gonna multiply it. So what that does is that creates an easier trinomial for me to factor, z squared, minus 17z plus 14 times 5 becomes 70. Okay, so now I know that when I have a trinomial, I'm always going to get two binomials. Since this is a minus plus trinomial, I know that my two factors have to be minus and minus. z squared, so my first term in each factor is z and z because z times z is z squared. And then I'm going to take this uh, last number, which once again, that's my C value, and I'm gonna write down all the pairs of numbers that multiply to make 70. One times 70, two times 35, five times 14, um, 10 times seven, okay? Now, one of these pairs is my answer. Which one is it? Well, it's the pair that could be added or subtracted to make 17, so it has to be 10 and seven. All right, now we know they're both minus, so I know it's a z minus 10 and a z minus seven, but I'm not done because I have to now divide both of these numbers by the leading number, the leading coefficient, which is five, okay? Now the rule is, if you then I simplify. So 10 divided by five is two, so this first quantity or parentheses becomes z minus two. And then the second quantity, because five does not divide into seven, I don't wanna divide that. What I do is I take the denominator number, the five, and I just simply move it up in front of the z. So my second quantity, my second parentheses, becomes five z minus seven. That would be my factor. And, and you could check it really quickly if you want to to see if your answer is right or if it's wrong. Okay, here's how we check it. We take the, the first terms is 5z multiplied by z. Does that give me 5z squared? It does. Then I take my last numbers is 2 multiplied by 7 going to give me my 14 here. It does. So we're pretty sure we've done it right there. Okay, all right, moving on to number 26. Notice in number 26, we have a binomial and then it's separated by a subtraction symbol and every number we see are perfect squares. So once again, what do we do when we have this? Well, we turn it into a trinomial and we put a zero X. So we make it a trinomial like this, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, now this is a trinomial, it has a leading number. So I take the leading number 25, I cross it out, and I multiply it by the last term. Okay, and what that does is this turns it into an easier trinomial to factor, x squared plus zero x minus, and now this is gonna be a big number here, 144 times 25, that's gonna be 3,600. Okay. I can factor trinomials. 
trinomials always factor into two binomials. This is a plus minus trinomial, so my factors have to be plus minus. My first terms have to be x and x, and then I'm gonna take my last number, which is 3,600, and I'm gonna write down all the pairs of numbers that multiply to 3,600, okay? And by the way, that one's not too hard because I noticed that 3,600 is actually a perfect square root number. So that means that 60 times 60 is 3,600. And that's what I want because I could put 60 and 60 together to make zero. So I put a plus 60, I put a minus 60. I'm not done because now I have to divide by my leading number, which was 25. Okay, now, 25 obviously does not divide into 60. However, we can reduce the fraction 60 over 25. All right, what does that reduce to? Um, let's see, I could divide both of these by five, so that gives me a 12 over five. So both of them reduce to 12 over five. So now, remember what we do is, we take my bottom number, five, and I'm gonna move it up. So my first, parentheses becomes 5x plus 12. My second one will be the same except for it's a minus, so I get 5x minus 12. All right, so there is my factor for number 26. Okay, um, after number 26, you were assigned number, turning it over here, you were assigned number 35. Okay, so now these are the ones that you really want to pay attention to because we haven't gone over how to do these yet. So this is brand new material, okay? Okay, so on number 35, what we're doing is, is that we're told that the volume of each box is represented by the given polynomial expression. What are the three factors that could represent the possible dimensions of each box? Okay, so this one is, we're told the volume is x to the third plus x to the second minus x. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that expression right here and we're gonna factor it, okay? So really what this problem is saying is, notice it said, what are the three factors? So we are going to factor this expression right here. All right, well, here's how we're gonna do it. It's gonna take, this is gonna be a double technique. So we're gonna have to use two techniques here. So my first technique is, is there a GCF? X to the third is XXX plus X to the second is XX minus 6X is three times two times X. So is there anything in common in that list? Yeah, there is, they all have an X in it. Okay, so that means when I factor this, I'm gonna have an X and then I'm gonna put in parentheses what's left from each list after I factor out an X. Well, I have an X to the second. I have a plus symbol. I have an X. I have a subtraction symbol. And I have a six. Okay? So that's my first step. I have to find the GCF. And by the way, that right there, that's my first factor. So it says, what are the three factors? Well, my first factor is going to be X. Okay, so I'm gonna cross that off, just get rid of it, and because that's my first factor. Now to get my other two factors, I now have to factor this trinomial here. Okay, well, this trinomial does not have a leading coefficient. It's a plus minus trinomial, so I know its two factors are gonna be binomials and they're gonna be plus minus. First term is gonna be an X and an X. And then I'm gonna take this last number here, which is six, and I'm going to write out all the pairs of numbers that multiply to make six. There's only two, one times six and two times three. Which one of those pairs can I add or subtract together to make a positive one? Well, it has to be three and two, and it has to be a plus three and a minus two. So those right there are my other two factors. So I would have an X plus three, and I would have an X minus two, okay? So it says, what are the three factors? Those are the three factors, X, X plus three, and X minus two. Okay, we're gonna do number 36 the same way. Once again, this expression represents the volume. 
I want to find the three factors. So what do I do? I take the expression, which is the volume, 6x to the third minus 2x squared minus 20x, and I'm going to find the three factors. So my first factor is going to be my GCF. Breaking each one of these down, terms down, 6 is 3 times 2, x to the third is x, x, x. 2x to the second, oh, I have a subtraction symbol. 2x to the second is 2x, x. I have a subtraction symbol. 20 is 5 times 2 times 2, and then x. So what's in common in all three of the lists? Well, we see they all have an x in them, so an x is common, and they all have a 2 in them. Okay, so that means what's the common factor? It's a 2x. So I write that down. I have a 2x. I'll put it over here. Then I'm going to put in parentheses what is left over from my expression after I factor out the greatest common factor, which is 2x. So what's left right here? I have a 3xx, so I have a 3x squared. Then I have a minus symbol, a subtraction symbol. What's left in this term? An x. Then I have a subtraction symbol. What's left in this last term? A 10. Okay, so that's my first step. So my first factor is the greatest common factor, 2x. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of get rid of that because I've dealt with it. Now I have to factor 3x squared minus x minus 10 to get my other two factors. Well, this is a trinomial, but it has a leading coefficient. So I cross out the three and I'm gonna multiply it by the 10 at the end. That gives me the trinomial x to the second minus x minus 10 times 3 is 30. Okay, now I'm going to factor this trinomial. Well, how do I factor trinomials? I know that trinomials always factor into two binomials. This is a minus minus trinomial, so my binomials are going to be a plus and a minus. The leading term is going to be x and x, and then I'm going to take this last number, 30, and then I'm going to write down all the factors, all the pairs that make 30. 1 times 30, 6 times 5, and I can stop right there because I'm looking for which pair can be put together to make a 1 or a minus 1. Well, it has to be 6 times 5. So it's going to have to be plus 5 and minus 6. Why plus 5 and minus 6? Because 5 minus 6 gives me that minus 1 there. Okay, well I'm not done yet because now I have to divide both of those numbers by my leading number which was a 3. Okay, so the first parentheses, 3 does not divide in the 5, so I cross out the 3, I move it in front of the x, so I get 3x plus 5. In the second parentheses, I can actually divide this. 3 divides into 6 makes that x minus 2, so my other two factors are 3x plus 5, that one, and x minus 2. And you can put them in parentheses or not, it doesn't matter. But that, those would be my three factors. Okay? All right, the last two problems that I wanted you to do on this worksheet for number 38 and 39, and these were error analysis. So what you wanted to do was you wanted to identify the first step in which an error occurs, and then you want to correct the answer. So step one is the problem. That'll never be where the first error occurs. And then you can see they multiplied step number one out. Okay, so if we were to multiply x minus 5 times x plus 1 out, what I would do is, um, one way that we can do it is we could draw the rectangle. I would write x minus 5 along the top, put a line at the minus sign, and put x plus 1 along the side, put a line along the plus. So x times x, x squared. For here, I would go positive 1 times x, so that's positive 1x. For this rectangle, I would go x times negative 5, so that's negative 5x. And for the bottom right rectangle, I would go positive 1 times that, negative 5, so that's negative 5. So you can see I get an x squared, I get a plus x, I get a minus 5x, and I get a minus 5. So step two was not a mistake. You can see all of those are represented inside my rectangle. Okay, well, now let's simplify this out. 
Okay, so when I simplify this out, the rectangle, I get an x to the second. All right, and then I can combine these together. So what's a positive 1 minus 5? That would be a negative 4. So this would become negative 4x, and then I would have a minus 5 at the end. So that's my answer, and you can see step 3 was the error. It has a plus 4x. So the step error occurred in step 3. That's where the error occurred. And the corrected step should be x to the second minus 4x minus 5. Okay, so we identify where the error is. It was right there. That should have been a minus. And then we put what it should be when it's corrected. Okay, moving on to 39. Last one we're going to go over. Um, step one is never wrong. So let's multiply these out. So let's multiply the 2x minus 5 times the x plus 3. And let's see if we can find an error. So I put 2x. I put a minus. I put a 5 along the top. Draw a line. I put an x plus 3 along the side, I, and at the plus symbol I draw a line. Now I'm going to fill it in. So I'm going to go x times 2x, that's 2x squared. So you can see, we got that. Then I'm going to go here, x times there, that's negative 5. So that's negative 5x. You can see, I got that. So, so far so good. Here I'm going to go positive 3 times 2x, that multiply those together, you get positive 6x, you can see I got that. And then the last rectangle I would go positive 3 times negative 5, so that's a negative 15. So you can see right here, there's my mistake. That's my mistake right there. Okay, so where did it occur? The error occurred in step 2. Let's correct it, so what should it be? Well, it should be 2x to the second power plus 6x minus 5x, but then it should not be plus 3, it should be minus 15. Okay, all right, so look these over, do these problems, uh, come to class, ask questions if you need to.